All right, friends, we are taking a slight detour from Glinda stuff once again this week. I have just fallen down the Regency rabbit hole. And while I have not seen the second season of Bridgerton, all of the Bridgerton costumes and this Bridgerton ball and all of this media that I have been fed over the last few months has made me think about Regency costuming. So I am going to be making Regency stays this week and a Regency chemise. I just really want to make the undergarments because I feel like if I make the undergarments, I will likely make an outer garment. And I was thinking for an outer garment, what would happen if I made a gothic Regency outfit? Is that even an option? I don't know. I don't think I've seen it. If you've seen it, let me know. That would be really helpful to get my creative juices flowing. And if you would like to see me make a gothic Regency dress, also let me know. Otherwise, this week, we're just gonna focus on the foundation garments, learn some things. This is uh, a new era for me. So let's talk about the patterns that I plan to use for the chemise and stays. For the chemise, I bought this pattern from Kitty Berry off of Etsy. She also has a YouTube channel, which she has instructional videos on how to use her patterns. Although let's be honest, I've made about 15 chemises before, so I might just throw the instructions out. Anyway, it was also only $3 on Etsy, which is a really good price considering I'm using Red Threaded's stays pattern, the long stays pattern, which is $20. So like, I think that balances out, right? You know, $23 in patterns, that's not bad. I think we should get started. So materials for the shift, I'm going to be using just a basic broad cloth cotton. It's the Symphony Cotton from Joanne Fabrics. It was on sale for $3.99 a yard this week. So I got three yards of it. It is in the dryer right now. So I have pre-washed it. I'm also going to be using elastic for the neckline instead of a ribbon because I just like the idea of it being like super easy to put on and have an elastic thing on it. We're not really worried about historical accuracy. We're worried about making something cute that might like fit in on the set of Bridgerton, but not necessarily fit in on the set of a reenactment of Regency anything if that makes sense so then for the stays the first thing that I'll be doing is a mock-up on the stays and I've got I've got my duck canvas this was $2.99 a yard at a consignment store here for the actual stays I don't have any extra cotill rolling around or sitting around so I'm going to use denim uh, actually I think this is twill it was in the denim section at Joanne Fabrics, it was on sale for 50% off or 40% off of $12.99. So it was really only like six bucks. I've used this for the like cotill part of corset before and it's been fine. So we're gonna do this. I'm not using a fashion fabric. This will be my top layer, but I did, I do have a lining fabric in my stash that I thought would be really fun and cute and only you all would really know that it's there. And that is this Winnie the Pooh fabric that I got at the same consignment store for $3 for the whole cut. I am not using spiral or flat steel. I am using synthetic whalebone. I use this religiously in all of my all like corsets, stays, everything these days. I absolutely love it. I love how easy it is to use the Dremel to clean the edges. I buy it in 10 yard rolls. I have one more 10 yard roll, so that means I don't have to buy any of this for it. I also purchased a wooden busk that will hopefully arrive today so I can get most of this done and I in that purchase I purchased silver grommets and a white satin binding for the binding of the stays. Let's get started with the chemise first since I am waiting for some of those supplies to arrive that gives me enough time to make the chemise and a mock-up for the stays today and then tomorrow we will make the real stays. Time to construct our puzzle.
my mom. I don't want that camera in my face. This is my sock. Okay, so now that I have everything cut out, this is literally all of the fabric that I have left after cutting stuff out. And that was with making the choice to not cut the bias tape on bias. I cut it against the grain. I know that's not what you're supposed to do, but I this like would make <laughs> the world's worst bias tape. With that being said, also I bought three yards of cotton, even though it said 2.8 yards is like all I would need for all of the sizes. So that makes me concerned for anyone that's a large, maybe buy like a little bit more if you want your bias strips cut on the bias. But this is all cut out and now we're gonna just start following the instructions and putting this together. This The instructions look really good, I'll be very honest. Like there are diagrams and everything. Not that like I necessarily need them, but it is kind of cool to see like how it was intended to put together by the person who drafted the pattern. So that's what we're gonna do is start putting this together. It looks like there's a lot of flat felled seams, gusset, yeah, things that I pretty much know how to do and I've done on the show, this show. Yes, I've done on this show before. No, um, that I've done on this channel before, but I'll do my best to kind of like go over it and share the process with you. Well, I guess let's start with step one. Because we're doing a flat felt seam, we're gonna be doing a lot of ironing. Okay, so this pattern has you do all of these pieces as a straight stitch first and then go back and do a flat felt seam. So what we did was we added our sleeve piece to our main piece and then our gusset to our sleeve and then our gusset to the actual main piece as well and then the side seam. So now I get the fun task of turning these all into flat felt seams which I just showed you how to do on both sides. So we're gonna do that and then figure out what the next step is. So yay. That took longer than I thought and my battery died and I lost like half of the time lapse, but it is what it is. All of these flat felt seams are done. So the next step in her, the instructions is the binding on the neckline, but I just really want to do the sleeves and the hem real quick because I want a really easy win because these flat felt seams took me an hour and a half and I just want an easy win. So I'm gonna do the hem and the hem of the sleeve and then we will figure out the binding on the neck. The binding on the neck will be the last thing to do. So uh, yeah. All right, the chemise is done and now I just need to start the mock-up for the stays. So yeah, but look at, I like the elastic so much. Again, I know it's not historically accurate, but it just makes it so easy to put on and take off. Um, so yeah, I like the length of the sleeve too. I think it's gonna be really nice. I can't wait to try it on with the stays. All right. Thank you. 
I just read through the instructions on how to make this and I've already made a mistake. I accidentally cut the front piece out wrong, so I'm gonna have to recut that. I know it's just a mock-up, but I still need to cut it out right. And then we're gonna do the mock-up. I'm gonna practice gussets. I've never done gussets like this before on a corset. They terrify me. Just looking at them makes me like really nervous, but I'm gonna do the best I can and follow the instructions. And then we're gonna get going on making the real one. I've already made decisions about this corset and the way that I'm making it that differ from the instructions. Like I already know I'm gonna do some things different because I'm not gonna be using my serger. I'm not gonna be flat lining it. I'm gonna be lining it. So far that's it. I'm gonna do the mock-up. I'm gonna recut out my fabric and practice some gussets. There are a grand total of eight in this. Two in the bust, two in the hip on each side, eight. That's terrifying. But, you know, I have to learn sometime. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what I did wrong. I did not pay attention to this marking right here, which means cut on a fold or like flip it over or whatever. You're supposed to cut everything out individually. So I accidentally cut two front pieces at the beginning, but now we have one complete front piece. And I know, I know I should have pressed this. We'll press it in a minute. But then now my next task is gonna be to use my little tracing paper and wheel tool to transfer these, that, all these markings. So let's do it. Okay, so it looks pretty good. I have just a couple issues um, with my own like personal sewing that I did. Um, I didn't leave the enough space on this for this busk. So I just need to make sure that when I make the pocket for the original, that it is spatially, cause this is supposed to go down just all like a little bit more, if you can see. Uh, another thing is I, the gussets were really hard um, on, this duck canvas, I'm gonna to try to find a good one and I might have to show you after this, but like it just frays because the duck canvas frays. But anyway, we're talking about fitting. I don't know why I'm talking about my sewing. Okay, so the biggest thing to mention is that there's supposed to be a drawstring at this like bodice bust area, like right up here, that's gonna pull this together a little tighter. And so I think that it's okay that it's like a little loose, you know, cause there's a drawstring that will help close it further. It feels pretty good. Um, there is quite a bit, let me see if I can do this. There is quite a bit of gap in the back, but that doesn't really bother me too much. That actually looks like a normal amount of gap. I also didn't put bones back there, so it is very wrinkled. Honestly, I'm gonna be real honest. This is probably one of the best fitted uh, mock-ups I've done. I really don't know what I would change. Like it feels pretty comfortable, except with the busk, it is kind of difficult to bend down. It's like that with my, my other corset that has a wooden busk. Like the way I have to bend is like in the like hip joints and not in the like stomach. So like, that's fine. It is what it is. The straps, I guess, could be a little longer, but honestly, I don't mind them being like connected like this and not meeting mainly because what I'll, I always end up making them too, like tying them too tight and then like having weird issues with my armpit. So like, oh, that's the other thing is like, oh man, some of my other stays, it comes a little too close to my armpit and these are a pretty good distance. So, you know, I'm feeling really good about these. I do need to make sure, and I didn't do this very well when I sewed this, that all of my seams are five eighths. I did some at three eighths and then I had to like go change them. So I need to make sure like every single thing that I know is supposed to be five eighths is five eighths. But ultimately I'm feeling pretty good about it. The practice was really good. Like honestly, the gussets are not nearly as scary um, after I finished most of them. Like I don't feel so scared of them. So I'm actually, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna copy it over as is. Uh, this has literally never happened before. I've always had to, you know, take them in or modify them somehow, but I feel very well supported here. Anyway, okay, let's make the real thing now. 
Okay, so this is kind of what I was talking about with the fraying at the corner here. Um, it's just, I think it's got to do with the weave of this. I'm hoping, I'm going to do the cotton lining layer before I do the outer layer when I do the gussets on the next one, just to get a little bit more practice to make sure. Otherwise, if this does happen, I'm just going to put a couple of drops of fray check. Sorry, I had to think about what it was called so that uh, it, at least if it does fray a little, like it's not going to fall apart and ruin the integrity of the stays. It happened on this one too, you can see. So it, it's just, I don't know if it's just me or fabric, but um, yeah. So now I am going to draw all those pieces onto two layers of fabric over there and uh, let's start making our stays. All right, friends, I have all of my pieces cut out. We are going to transfer all of the like the lines with our wheel tool and our transfer paper. Okay, so I'm gonna actually add the boning markings to the lining so that I don't have any issues with this, the drawing and the markings appearing on the outer fabric when I go, like when it's all done. So basically I'm just doing gusset lines on the top fabric and the lining and then boning on just the lining and then we will get going on it like adding all the gussets and stuff i think i'm going to do the cotton layer of gussets first because that's on the inside that'll give me just a little bit more practice and then we can do the top layer and hopefully by the time i get to the top layer i'm good enough to where i don't have any of that weird little fraying at the corners but again if i do have it it's an undergarment i'll fray check it to make sure it doesn't destroy itself over time and then go from there today is the day i'm going to finish this and that is all <laughs> let's do this Okay, so I have all of my pieces marked and for these smaller ones, there is a bird out there that will not stop yelping and we're just gonna talk over it. We'll talk louder than the bird. Anyway, um, I'm gonna do uh, these gussets at a basting stitch and I'm gonna just stitch right over the lines I drew. And then we will do all of these like gusset lines in here on these as a like normal stitch, so 2.5 millimeter stitch. Once that's done, I can start putting the gussets together. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I can't remember if I explained this, how to do these gussets according to the instructions during the mock-up, so we're just gonna do it now, and if I did, I won't use this footage. First step is to, after I've done my stitching on my stitch on my like markings, is cut down this all the way to the point here. Okay. So I've made it down to the point and now I'm going to fold this back on this stitch line. I think it says 3 sixteenths of an inch. I am not measuring this. I am just basically trying to hide this stitch line from the, uh, from the front view. So I'm just folding it back and pressing it down. I'm trying to be careful not to press this because this is my boning line and it will disappear because I used um, those heat mark, those heat pens. So then I'm going to do this side. And I am using my thumbnail to kind of get up in there. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the machine and sew it. Okie dokie. So, can you see that? That's the stitching. 
So now I am going to attach the gusset to this and by doing that, I'm going to line this up here. Can you hear Toby? Oh my God, how funny. So with this line here, I'm basically trying to get my blue markings like right underneath the stitching that I just did because I'm gonna stitch as close to that as possible. Okay, so now I can take this over to my machine and sew it. Gusset, it's done, look at that. And then this is the back. Basically, I'm not perfectly lined up with these stitch lines and that's kind of a big reason why I decided to do a lining is because this edge isn't clean, but um, this is the lining. We will sandwich the two together. All right, so all the gussets are done and I did put um, some fray check. This is what I use. Uh, some fray check on just the like points just to keep them from fraying. And since these ones still need to dry, I'm gonna work on the lining and basically sew all of the pieces of the lining together. Then I can sew up all of these pieces and I still have to do the pocket, which is right over there. And that'll get done and sewn to the lining and then we'll start sewing everything up. So yeah. Okay, so I have attached the lining to the main fabric and then I've also just sewn up these back seams here. This is where our grommets will go, a piece of boning, a piece of boning. So the next thing I need to do is actually start preparing all of these boning channels. So I've got to, I think what I'm gonna do first is line up the tops and bottoms and just get them sewn together. And then like, instead of going straight here, stop and go this way. So I think I'll start at the top. Oh, but then I still have the seams. I lied. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna insert almost all of the boning from the bottom because the bottom is a little bit easier to sew up. So except for these top, two top pieces, I will basically just sew across all of these seam lines. Like I'll match these seams up. I'll match obviously this up. And then I will sew around this and up and through that way. Obviously my pocket is already in, so I can just sew straight across this way. The drawstring happens when I'm working on the binding so we will worry about that then. Then once I've gotten these pieces all sewn up, except for the top of here, I will flip the bottom over and that's where I will, um, actually I'll go and do the, ch the boning channels and then do the bottom section. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So top, except for around these bonings, bonings, <laughs> channels, flip, do the channels down, then the bottoms. Cool. All right, so all of our boning channels are sewn in. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, but like all they're all sewn in. Now I have to take some of the boning out of the mock-up, shorten it, clean it up and get it in here and then add the few pieces of boning that I did not add when I made the mock-up. I have my Dremel that I'll be using to clean the edges and my safety goggles because obviously and uh, yeah, let's do it. Once that's done, we can add the binding, figure out the drawstring center front and grommets. I think I can finish this in two hours, right? I'm not hand sewing the binding. I think I can do it. We'll see. Okay, friends, we are here. 
This is the third time that I have tried to film this outro because things, noises keep happening. <laughs> um, okay, so overall my opinion on these stays is that I really like them. I think the pattern was freaking fabulous. It was easy to use. Gussets are not that scary. Like, hey, past Casey, just wanna let you know, when you go to sew those gussets, I'm gonna practice gussets. I've never done gussets like this before on a corset. They terrify me. Just looking at them makes me like really nervous, but I'm gonna do the best I can. They're gonna be a piece of cake. They're really not hard. Just stop worrying. Just, just stop. Just stop, stop. Yeah, okay. So gussets were not nearly as hard as I had made them out to be. I really like this these days. I really loved this project. Did I think I was gonna finish this in two days? Yes. Did it take me three days? Yes, it did. Am I okay with that? I'm going to be. But anyway, I just really liked these days. I really like this project. And if you would like to see me make a Regency gown to wear over these and like a petticoat and all the other things, please let me know in the comments below. It obviously would not be next week, but like if enough of you convince me that I should make this. But anyway, let me know in the comments below. A quick little Glinda update. I just want to let you all know that we will be getting back to her soon. I just need a small break from working on her because I'm not really happy working on her right now. Um, and I need to figure out how to become happy around working on her. I do enjoy the sequining and maybe I just need to work on all the sequin stuff for a little bit and then I can come back to her bodice. But we will be coming back to her. I just have to reframe how I think about this project. And I'm also just kind of feeling like a lot of pressure because content creation is my full-time job. And right now I'm not really creating any new content with Glinda. Like there's nothing new to share. It's just timbre embroidery, timbre embroidery sequin sequin sequins and so it's just it's just a little hard for me right now to be able to do my job and my passion that's where i'm at all right so with that being said next week we are doing a glinda live stream with sequins which I'm, I'm loving doing that. I don't know, it's reliable. So next week on June 1st at 2 p.m. Eastern, I will be doing a live stream of the sequins. Again, if you would like me to make a dress to go over these days, do the thing. Give this video a thumbs up because we all know that it does help the algorithm and you know, it'd be, it'd be really cool if um, more people saw my videos, I don't know. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your love and support and everything. My air just kicked on, so now I really do have to get, like, stop this video. Um, if you, I don't have anything else to say. Um, I feel like the Oscars, when they play you off, that's what I feel like right now. What kind of music would I get played off to? You know? Thank you all so much for watching this video and until next time, may all your dreams come true. And now I get to eat some of these desserts behind me and I'm so excited. I haven't eaten yet today. 